I thought today I'd have a, look, a go at Lock Oar up in Scotland. Now this is going to be a, there's going to be quite a lot going on in this guy, so I'm going to have to move fairly quick. So I'm just starting with a weak raw sienna wash. I want to make sure it's nice and wet, so I can get everything in before it dries. And without cleaning the brush, I'm going into a lizarding crimson. Clean the brush this time and go into ultramarine just on its own. And I'm just going to paint the bits you can see, bits of blue sky you can see between the clouds. And down the bottom there. And a little bit in the water down there. That's the blue sky done. Now back into the, uh, I'm going into some clouds now. So. Um, a lizard in crimson, ultramarine, maybe a touch of light red as well, just throw it all in. And starting over on this left hand side, a little bit darker, a bit more ultramarine, Payne's grey. Just various mixes of those. Same again, some more in down the bottom. Don't forget the reflect. Well, I, I could put these in afterwards, but while I've got the paint on the brush, I might as well put it in now, these reflections, because this bottom third will be water. So, a few more mixes light red. Ultra, um, ultramarine, a lizard in crimson, and just I'm just going over what I've already done basically without going right to the edge, just trying to create a bit of texture in the clouds. That'll do for that, I think. So, next, I'm going to put in the distant mountains. So, I'm going to clean the brush. Take the excess off on the towel and then just a general mix of the same sky colours but leaning towards blue and then the most, I'm going to come right the way down I think in our distant mountains just below this big cloud there on the horizon. Now there's some nearer ones, so I'm going to go for a stronger mix. And they're going to come something like. They're cleaning the brush. Still using the same colours as the sky. This mountain on this side is a little bit bigger. Another peak there. Then that comes down. And I'm just trying to keep this. Keep this distant water line. Parallel to the bottom of the page, so I don't want the water, the water leaning one way or the other. And before I do any more, I'm just going to pull the paper tight because it's stretched slightly after I've wet it. Because I've wet it evenly, it's, it's stretched evenly, it's just a case of refixing it there on the right hand side. I've got a nice flat surface to work with again. So I'm just going to carry on, just making sure this is parallel to the bottom of the page. 
No, I'm happy with that. Now on the far, on the very far shoreline, there is a tree line. But to make it stand out on it, I'm going to need a pretty dark mix. So I'm just going Payne's grey, lemon yellow, and I'm just going to try and. So I could have done with making the bottom of this a little bit lighter because it's going to be difficult to make these trees stand out. That's where the tonal sketch comes in handy. These trees go all the way across. We'll try and leave one or two gaps and vary the height. I mean, it'll look a bit bland if it's just one continuous line of trees going all the way from one side to the next. And obviously remember to keep them small as well because they're very far away. So there's very little detail. I'm not going to be painting any trunks or branches or leaves or anything like that. So I've just about managed to make those stand out. Now beneath those, I'm just going to suggest just a little shoreline. So it's going to be predominantly raw sienna, just a hint of burnt umber. And again just maybe such a lemon yellow for that sort of sandy colour. That's our clean up brush. Lemon yellow. Raw sienna. That's a bit brighter. So I've got a little, little bit of sand. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put in the reflections of these mountains. So I'm going to make sure that this is dry. So I'll give it a quick dry with the air dryer because I want to wet this bottom third now. If I do it while the paint's still wet the paint will go all over the place. So I'll use the air dryer just to speed things up. And then with a clean brush just wet all this area and try not to touch the, uh, the, the far beach there and then just take the excess water off the brush and before before that water dries I'm just going to recreate those mountain colours which were just basically uh, the sky colours. Doesn't have to be absolutely bang on, as long as it's there or thereabouts. And then just to just pull down. That's all there is to it, rather. Leave that little bit gap in the middle because these distant ones are too far to reflect and I maybe just put a few dark little bits in there just to try and vary it So again, before I carry on, I'm just going to dry that now. And what I might just do... So, just for a dark mix, I'm just mixing burnt umber and ultramarine.
I'm just going to just tap very gently, just where the uh, where the land and the water meet. Just trying to keep it subtle, just to break it up. Just hit and miss basically all the way along the shoreline. Where it will be, it'll be like the mud on the beach or whatever. It just helps break up the uh, the land and sea area. So next, over on this right hand side, I'm going to take a fairly dry brush. Burnt umber and ultramarine. Maybe such a light red. I'm just going to scuff the ends up like like so. 